before this movie, did you know about the dark web? What's up guys, oh, welcome to Luxury Dark for brand new video. So in this video we have something called that. No, I didn't. I didn't. I had no idea. Now I'm going to assume that the majority of you have seen the original Unfriended. Or maybe you've just seen YMS's review of the original Unfriended, which is better than the actual movie. But there was a standalone sequel made in 2018, Unfriended Dark Web. And if you know anything about my channel, you know that I am a dark web professional. I heard about these dark web mystery box videos online. Guys, seriously. I think I know who sent me this box. Look, I'll be totally honest. If I saw this cover while scrolling through Netflix, I would think this is an extremely low budget movie that is perfect to ignore while you dry hump your Tinder match, or so I've heard. But not a million dollar movie with a screenplay writer from The Grudge, and not the bad one either. So one of my biggest questions coming into this movie is can this format continue to work without feeling redundant? This strict desktop POV, this rehash of the original Unfriended, can this film still carry the bit of charm that the original had? And also, does it suck ass? I'm gonna answer all those questions today. So this movie actually begins as a love story between Matthias, who we will now be calling Steve, because Matthias' is a stupid name and its awkward amount of syllables is really gonna fuck up the flow of the review, and Amaya, who has the same amount of syllables, but she also looks like Gal Gadot. So, overruled. Amaya is deaf, played by an actual deaf actress, which is nice, and one of the very few nods I'll give this movie. And they obviously have problems communicating with each other because... Steve's an idiot. So here's the story. Steve basically stole this laptop from a lost and found because it had sat there for so long. And the very first scene is Steve trying to guess the password. He types in some interesting guesses. Password 123, 40, 2018, Big Dick 69. The next guesses are kind of interesting. Feel the burn, 2020. Subtle. Han shot first. That's a meme. Call Feffy. You all remember it, the Donald Trump typo that wasn't funny when it first happened and was even less funny when people tried to legitimize it as criticism. I'm watching a movie about a glitchy ghost. Get this political <laughs> shit out of here. What do you know? The password was a question mark. 60% of the time, it works every time. Amaya's very annoyed with Steve because he has lazily refused to learn ASL, American Sign Language. Steve tries to find ways to make communication easier, but she feels like he's not trying hard enough, which is funny because he developed a software that can translate his sentences into sign language. That's amazing. But hey, you'll get him next time, Steve. Steve is obviously hurt by all this. I just really wanted to know that I love her and I genuinely care for her and it's not a matter of Plane tickets? Bitch, why would you want to leave this? You're already in the vacation spot you get flown out to. I'm in Chicago. It's fucking cold. My dick's not worth it. <laughs> so these messages are directed to Nora, who appears to be the past owner of this laptop. All his logins are auto-filled, so Steve's curiosity, his cock, gets the best of him here. But hold that dark nut because we got game night, boys. Hey, how about, uh... We go analog, huh? Little doo -doo -doo. This is the group of friends for this movie, or should I say, welcome to the Diversity Olympics. You know how people will angrily tweet about a movie like, what the hell, there's no people of color in this movie. Boom. There's no LBGT representation. Boom. But what about the deaf community? Boom. What about DJs? Hi MTV, my name is Kendra. I live in Malibu, I'm into blank, and I love to have a good time. Hi, my name is Kendra, I'm from Malibu. I'm into having sex on top of a pizza, and I love having really good time. Yeah, that would definitely be the throwaway card. <laughs> and I love having really good time. No one, stop, stop. On top of pizzas, of course I love fucking on top of pizzas. Oh my God, I didn't know I was getting sausage with my cheese. <laughs> you guys couldn't see it, I was lifting my legs up from the bottom. 
It was, I'm kind of glad you didn't see it, honestly. Come on, guys, guys, I got chips and I've got dips and I got some killer bud. <laughs> So the way they shot this movie, all this internet shit is obviously edited in post. All these actors are in one house, in different rooms, staring into a GoPro. And then they just run through the script multiple times. It's not that much easier to pick and choose the best take for each scene. And they can also easily rotate the shots whenever the layout changes or whenever anything interrupts the call. You think he was just gonna take the laptop and walk away? With Damon's help, Steve finds a file hidden in his hard drive that contains recordings that look like they were taken from personal cameras. Stay alert! Okay, hold on, I'm gonna play it now, okay? Check it out. I just got these new speakers. <laughs> Bro, you always got the sickest jump scares, dog. <laughs> you always got, you're fucking cocksucker. You didn't generate any fear in that scene. You just put an air horn to my ear and sound it off like a prick. That's what pricks do. You a prick? Take me down. <laughs> no, no. Take me down. There's more of Steve bombing with Amaya and, hold on. Is this green screen? Why is this green screen? Am I stupid? Has my optometrist failed me? Look at the differences here. Why is that green screen? You just forgot to sh shoot the whole first quarter of the movie with her? Through this whole time, Steve's messages are being blown up on the previous owner's Facebook. And the person blowing him up is claiming that they are the owner of the laptop he stole. His name is Nora C. And he's using his friend, Erica's Facebook. Steve feels bad, afraid, and tells him he'll return it to the lost and found because he's been called out for being a fucking criminal. But you know that there's two things things that deter my boy Steve. That's vaginas and mysterious propositions from default profile pics. One of my personal weaknesses. It's not even your Facebook. Why do you care? Why are you still respond? You're gonna die. Can I just take a moment to say that the Hulu player on desktop is absolute ass. If I forward, rewind, skip to a timestamp and or play with the full screen button a little bit too much, it freezes, or I get stuck with a buffer bar for the rest of the movie. It never fails to fail. Hulu, more like, who looked this over? It's not my internet because Netflix works just fine. And I make fun of Netflix a lot on this channel. It's time we cyber bully Hulu. I pay $80 a month for this shit and I still get shown ads. Fucking greedy ass dog shit interface. Sharon will only discuss the topic further on the river, which if you don't know what that is. Dude, this is dark net. Yeah, I have no idea this river thing. Alright, that's, that's a Nobelay network, you're being bounced. Still not done with that Chinese food, huh? Come pot too good? And I think that's a good cue to show you what YMS discovered about the movie in his quickie review. And what's really funny is that nowhere in the movie do they say dark web, they just keep calling it dark net. So I guess the marketing department thought that sounded really lame and changed it to dark web instead. So they dubbed over the line in the trailer accordingly. Dude, this is dark web. What's dark web? What's dark web? And that is not only funny, but the fact that dark web continues to be a buzzword used like this, it just gives me major general commander flashbacks. This content is heavily encrypted and private network access only. The dark web is- Who the fuck asked you? Charon, it's a ferryman of the dead. Nor I see the fourth hole. It's a fake name, guys, it's- Charon backwards. He's one of them. This is where they meet up to trade. One of them was actually sending me private messages earlier. It was uh, Charon 68. Oh, poor schmuck never made it to 69. Was it worth the joke? It's been war driving. Totally. Translate. Um, okay, hackers drive through neighborhoods trying to scoop up Wi Fi addresses of any unsecured or vulnerable routers so they can. Wait, people can do that? They feel so vulnerable. Oh! You're welcome. For what? I just shot you some good advice. I'm pretty sure it's a bullet because when you feel vulnerable online, NordVPN is the way to go. Please don't tell me you shot me for an ad. Protect your online activity on up to six of your devices with their lightning speed servers. You better hope I don't make it through this. NordVPN's onion over technology encrypts all traffic before running it through a Tor network and then onto its destination. Now that's some dark web shit. Fuck your relatability. 
and your topical sponsor. With a risk-free 30-day money-back guarantee, right now, you can get 70% off a three-year plan, plus one additional month for free when you go to nordvpn.com slash MrGG, or use code MrGG. This special offer makes your subscription just $3.49 a month. Wait, you're telling me I can protect my virtual livelihood for less than I spend on a cup of coffee? I'm doing it too. Thanks for NordVPN for sponsoring this video. I can't believe I'm gonna die before going to nordvpn.com slash MrGG for that amazing Shut up and get back to the review. Listen, I got no beef with this girl, honestly, but they just fed her to the dogs. She has no worthy lines, she just pops up for generic reactions, and it makes me think, I wonder who's gonna die first? So they eventually figure out the Sharon is a code name the Dark Webians use to talk to each other. And this specific one has prepaid him for a torturous murder with 10 million dollars. But it's in Bitcoin, so it doesn't sound as stupid. They find a video set of girls and realize this is what's being traded. Amaya finally decides to make it to set and give Steve a call. But she's showering, so who called him? Maybe I can ask Amaya's roommate if it, uh, oh. Kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it. I think Chiro found him. For a movie that's trying to make this as realistic as possible, I think that's part of the scare, this is a horrible concept to introduce. This anonymous static shock who radiates glitches whenever he's on screen is very off-putting at this point. And I understand to a certain extent why you've done this, because a guy slowly walking around and looking at the camera wouldn't be as intimidating. It's just really funny when it's paired with the fact that he can send night-themed messages and erase them because- Dude, this is Darknet. So now we have a situation like the original Unfriended where if anybody leaves the call or tries to call 911, they die. But only Steve knows that. And Steve also has to convince Amaya to come to his location so he can then trade the laptop for Amaya with the Darknet man. Please, okay. No, look, we don't, we don't have a lot of time, okay? We need to help this girl. Matthias? Yeah. I know there's a lot going on, okay? Mm hmm But you need to trust us, and you need to move. Was that one necessary, Churo? She won't hear me coming? I mean, this chick had fully functioning ears, and she also didn't hear you coming. Somehow. Steve's group of friends are ready to contact the authorities, but he stops them with a really sucky lie that I'm not even gonna repeat. It's not real. What? It's a game. It's uh, my game. Uh, it's the one I've been working on. Damon. Damon knows. Holy shit, Asshole. man! It is game night. The night we met at the bar, I, the music was, was so loud and I saw you. Why was that the only detail you mentioned? The music was loud? Is this movie fucking with me? You guys can throw up all the alleys you want. I'm not ooping shit. The video of the next girl who was to be murdered turns out to be missing. And also the profile who he received messages from earlier. And that gets Steve in hero mode. So he puts in his own insurance and transfers the hitman's payment to his Bitcoin wallet, holding it until Amaya and the new girl Erica are safe. Also, I can't help but notice that he never cut the feed from the chat, so they just see him talking to nobody right now. You get the money back when I see on the news that Erica Dunn is back home safe with her parents. And that's when the dark web guy FaceTimes him. I want yeah, I don't know. I think there's something wrong with your signal. It says poor connection, but I can never tell if it's me or you. <laughs> all the other Sharon Primes, they monitor all Bitcoin accounts. They're gonna think I'm trying to cash out. He sounds like a Power Ranger villain. Stop. I lost your screen. What's going on? What's happening? I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't know. God, they pulled you across the river, didn't they? Because Steve moved all of the money, the Charons notice and question his real identity and why he would transfer the money through the river. Recite the code. Oh God. I just put a bullet in our head. You stupid. Okay. Listen to me. Oh, so you can just turn that off? Does your hood harbor your virtual disguising abilities? Dude, it's obvious he's carrying a signal jammer with him. His voice has a filter. Shut the fuck up. Give me the money back first, and no, then- No, fuck you! Return no, the money. No, 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 no. When Erica Dunn is home safe, then you get the money. Okay. You better hurry up. They said this is your last chance, Sharon Four. <laughs> you better hurry up. Said this is your last chance. <laughs> that was straight out of the Drake and Josh acting class. I've read about prison, and it ain't fun. They're asking why you drain the account. Tell them I switched from Bitcoin to Ethereum. It's a better exchange rate. 
I got a tip. Are they buying it? Yeah, I think so. His friends are still pretty sketched out about Steve's cover-up, and that's when they have some strange guests in their chat, who send over a YouTube link showing the process they took to find Lex's. That's the DJ, by the way. That's actually the first time I'm saying her name. Showing the process to find her address, and then they autoplay another YouTube video. Are you calling Lex right now? Yes, I'm calling Lex right now. Wait, um, wait, I thought she was... Where is she? Well, I mean, come on. What's the DJ without a sick drop? Boom! They're not talking that one in 2020. Boom, boom. <gasps> <laughs> These darknet watchmen are really ruining my experience. All right, let me catch you up to speed and also review a bit because there's kind of a lot going on. Churro is trailing Amaya right now to meet up with Steve to trade Amaya for the laptop and Amaya doesn't even know. Also a part of the trade, Steve will send back all the Bitcoin he snatched once Erica Dunn, Dunny, Dooney, is set free. All the other chars caught whiff of Steve's bullshit and that's when they figured out who he was, infiltrated Steve's friend group, and killed off Lex. And we don't know if Churo is aware of this because Churo is watching Steve through Amaya's connection to make sure he doesn't tip his friends off or else he'll kill Maya. Which now that I say that all out loud, it sounds it sounds really stupid. Because all of the other chars are gonna kill your friends anyway. So if you give Churo back his laptop, what is that even gonna do? That's not gonna stop them. They already know that you know. What's the game plan here, guys? Can you stay on the call? Just just keep your keep, keep your phone in your pocket or, or or whatever. Just 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 stay on, okay? Amaya loses connection in the subway, and that's when Steve takes the time to tell them the truth, that this is all real, and they need to pretend that everything is normal for Amaya not to die, because Churro's watching. But there's also no promises on whether or not the other charges might kill you, but you know, do me a solid. Guys, if we don't do this, Amaya's... Please. So, uh, who wants to go first? I guess fuck Amaya, right? That's the best you got, you fucking Oscar noms? Then again, Steve, you're not really leading by example, buddy. You were the one trying to convince everybody to do it, and then you just dip out, you fraud. Just tell the Chars you're Parker from Luxury Dark. Instant dark web respect. I know you told her to stay on the video call with you, but the fact that she's agreeing to do that is hilarious. I'm deaf, not blind. Let me check Twitter or something, dog. I'm fucking bored. Char joins the chat. Another video. Oh, you know what? Poke around all you want, AJ, asshole! AJ, 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 first time mentioning his name as well. He runs a podcast, so the Chars show the process of cutting out audio bits from different podcasts so they can call 911 and say this. 911. I am sick and tired of all the corruption. Sir, is this a real emergency? I'm gonna pack up all my assault weapons and explosives. Go downtown to the mall and have some fun. Sir, can you tell me your name? Jeff Cock is a family name. They made that call 10 minutes ago. AJ, you need to go. Police, we have a search warrant. You have a search warrant? I don't think you can get those in under 10 minutes. Fucking cops got a search warrant like a hot and ready from Little Caesars. So the police are there and all of his friends tell him to just get on the ground. Instead, he slowly creeps over to the bottom of the steps halfway between his hands fully up and being on the ground. And I'm not a police officer, but I'd advise to go with one or the other. The one in between that you're doing would make me a little itchy. Where is it? Let's talk. They're into his computer. Open the door or we'll break it down. Stay down. Oh my God. We got him. We got him, Cap. You said he had a gun. What the fuck are you screamed he had a gun? That wasn't me. I, someone, it must have been fucking James. Said it. How do you say it? He's got a gun!
Right there! I think. Sorry, we're closed! <laughs> Try the safety button! Yeah, that's the middle stage. Okay. Okay, and friend, that's enough. I've let too much shit slide. I really doubt all these dark web criminals went to go watch his dog shit podcast to splice this threatening audio soundboard to call 911. Why not just swat them? Not as cool? That one not convoluted enough for you? And yes, it's very convenient the way this is working out for the chars. I've accepted that. You kind of have to if you want to move on with this movie. Churro catches on and realizes the circle of chars know he lost the laptop. So he's like, it doesn't matter at this point. We're all dead anyway. And before AJ's death, Nari had left to the train station to try and save Amaya. I just realized I hadn't mentioned anybody's name at the beginning of the review. I'm sorry. This is Nari. Serena. Serena. Tell Steve this and he decides he can get there quicker. So he starts to leave until the charge strike again. I don't want you to have to choose. I don't want you to have to choose. <laughs> So now they are watching Nari and Serena's mother with cancer in the hospital. So she's forced to choose her fiance or her dying mother. Turns out Serena's sick of both of them because she refuses to say shit and they both die. No! No! Great moves. Keep it up. Proud of you. This looks cheap. Dude, this is dark room. <laughs> See, that's how you know Nari was lesbian. She died the very first time she had a train man on her. <laughs> Nari! Nari! <laughs> so I actually completely forgot to mention this. I didn't even write this down. Uh, Serena dies. She dies because uh, the dark web guy just goes in her house and then bashes her head in very much like the first lady, Amaya's friend. I did not give a flying fuck about this character. So much to the point that I just completely refused to acknowledge her passing. <laughs> Amaya's still stuck on the subway because there's apparently two mangled bodies they need to clear first, so Steve rushes to rescue her. Meanwhile, Damon took control remotely of Steve's laptop so he could download all the creepy files so the chars don't squash the evidence when they get the laptop back. And that's when a char takes remote control of Steve's laptop and begins to Photoshop his face, crudely, might I add, over one of the screenshots they had with the missing girl, as another char sneaks into Steve's house with the actual missing girl. Cue the saw music. Matthias, Matthias, he didn't lose the laptop. Sharon Four, he left it there deliberately. He wanted it to be found. They all wanted it to be found. See, it was a lure. It was a lie. They're setting us up. So it was all bait from the start. We did everything they wanted us to do. We moved the money, we copied the videos. They're gonna make it look like it was us the whole time. And then Amaya was sent a new address from Steve, but it wasn't really Steve. And then they made it seem as if Damon hung himself for being so ashamed of his crimes. So now Amaya's dead. The only person I feel bad for. <laughs> And not because she's deaf, but because she had literally nothing to do with this. She didn't even fuck with you like that, Steve. You suck. Why are you doing this? Why? It is game night. 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 He goes from laughing like you sons of bitches to crying in an instant like it's not an awkward rotation at all. And now here comes the missing girl waking up at Steve's house and going directly to the computer and not the exit. Hell, you just getting a food fight? And the vote ends up, don't let Matthias, Steve, Steve live. So then he gets, he gets ran over by a van down by the river. Turns out this was all being live streamed on the dark web where people watch these game nights and even put out some props to bet on. That part's kind of fun. Someone cashed out on Steve being a simp. So this movie was supposed to be called Unfriended Game Night. I think you can kind of tell now that I tell you that. But Jason Bateman told him to eat dick. Our movie's out first. So it was renamed Dark Web. And I think that only benefited them. Thank God for Jason Bateman. And that is the end of the movie. My thoughts? It's bad. But it's honestly tough to decide if it's worse than the first. I think the first has better moments and better characters because the DJ girl and Serena meant 
absolutely nothing to me. I think I only like Nari because I like her from Get Out. AJ was a bomb because he wasn't funny. I'm assuming he was supposed to be the comic relief to some extent. By the way, I fucking hate when I see an actor's interview and they seem so likable and funny when I didn't necessarily see that in the movie. Now I understand if you have those qualities that won't always necessarily translate on camera, but all it does is make me look past the actors and pass the blame off elsewhere. And Damon was probably my favorite character. Actually, that's a lie. This guy was. And don't even bring up Amaya and Steve. They're just as blank as Blair and Mitch. But I think the world is not quite done with this type of format. I'll be shocked if this doesn't get another sequel. I mean, the box office rewarded them. It was a pretty strong drop off from the original Unfriended, but they made their money back big time. The format has lost its charm in my opinion. But that's also why I'm kind of glad this wasn't a direct sequel and they kind of just went in a completely different direction with it. That helped. The twist was a nice offering for what we got. I honestly didn't see it coming, but I only watch shitty movies now, so I'm pretty much trained to be an idiot. But I don't hate it. I didn't hate the original. I obviously have my gripes. <laughs> we can totally put something like this on while you're finger banging your local barista. Shit, Negro, that's all you had to say. <laughs> If you guys enjoyed this movie review, please leave a like, and here is your second reminder to please leave a like. Subscribe because I have more content coming your way. Shout out to Kaylin Harris for retweeting my last video tweet. I popped off a little bit on the second channel, so you guys should go check that out, Mr. G-Dubs. Also, there's a bunch of cameos in the movie review from people you might recognize. YMS did something very similar in his original Unfriended review, and I thought it was just a really fun idea, so letting you know, totally bit the idea, but uh, I had a lot of fun doing it. And finally, shout out to my wonderful patrons, such as Aaron Bertram. You sound like a 50 year old man. AJ Cowley. Hey, the guy in the movie was named AJ. Alexander Flessus. I hope you don't have a lisp. Amanda Martinez. I have no joke for her name. April Howe. How? Is that racist? Uh, Armando, he said fuck a last name. Austin Kidd, that ain't kind of funny because of Austin Jones, it's, it's not that funny, but you know. Bazcart, who definitely plays Roblox. Dank Memekeen, who I respect for coming in here with such a fiercely stupid name, <laughs> but he hasn't backed down. Demon Gamer Kitty, ooh woo. Devin Diaz, hey, I guess you're the DD. <laughs> Georgia Peach Forever, that twang. Heisenberg White, you know who you are. Hunter Ure, that was a joke. Julian Mazzarelli, if I make a mozzarella joke, that's corny. Kai Jordan Berry, you got three first names. Lori Goodwin, more like bad loss. <laughs> Lindsay Jasper, why am I roasting my patron's names? <laughs> Marty, just Marty. Mitchell Hines, catch up. Philip Horn, unless it's pronounced Horne, which is really funny. Reese, Reese what? Sam Honeyman, what's the deal with bees? Sergio Valencia. I feel like you can't give the name Sergio to somebody who's not intimidating. Sketchy HD, 1v1 me. Sonic Fan 28, uh, meow. Surreal Subwoofer. Yeah, you wanna know what subwoofers do to people? Tiana. Tiana what? And Valentine Snow. Happy Valentine's Day, guys. Thank you to my patrons. Another huge thank you to everyone who worked with me to cameo in the video. And as always, I am Mr. Gigi, and I am out.